Lucy, this way, come. <coughs> Shut up, you nutter. Right, anyway, okay, so here we are on our midnight walk and, walk and talk around the park. It's, what, about 25 past midnight now? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so yeah. So, topics. Um, well, apparently I've just seen a few video hints about the COVID that there's going to be 100,000 cases, they reckon, it, per day. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, that's probably a load of rubbish. Because, again, they reckon it's going to double or something like every nine days. Well, look, OK, maybe it's been doubling every nine days up to now. It doesn't mean it's going to double every nine days, is it? Hey, eh? Not in... in, in oh, it's just nonsense. Complete nonsense. It's about fear. Pushing fear all the time. That's all it is. And I'm only crying. How you doing, bubs? Yeah, that's all it's about. It's pushing fear. So, yeah. yeah. In the end, it's what it is, isn't it? Yeah. Fear is a stupid thing to push because, yeah, you know, you've got to pay for it in the end. Politicians will pay for it in the end. Oh, they will. Always happens. Politician who pushes fear, whose basic power is by spreading fear. In the end, people become afraid of them. So it's not going to work out in their favour in the end. That's a certainty. So there you go. There are consequences to behaviour. I was thinking earlier, actually. Yeah. To every action, there's a reaction. However, the reaction isn't necessarily equal. Certainly according to our understanding, that's because our understanding can be wrong in so many ways. So, the reactions could be equal all the time. It's just that we don't really understand what the reaction should be. <laughs> or what equal is, really. Um, so, yeah. Because we don't necessarily see the ripple effect. Yeah, that ripple effect could be tiny, it could be massive. So therefore the reaction could be tiny, it could be massive. We don't know. All we know is that, yeah, there are going to be reactions to actions. you got a bot bot Chewy, would you leave it for Dad? Would you? There's a good boy, Chewy, eh? There you go then, there you go then. There you go. There you go. <laughs> she was a good boy. Oh, and the pups that are gone, they're all doing well, so that's one thing. Um, yeah, they're all doing very well from what I've been told. Um, well, little Bunty. Yeah, Rose is absolutely delighted with Bunty. So that's good. Oh yeah, Bunty's a... A lovely boy, he really is. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful nature. Such a softy. Absolute softy, same as Heffy. Same as Heffy. Heffy, oh, you couldn't find a better girl. And you couldn't find a better boy than Bunty. Really, you couldn't. Both incredibly beautiful. Both incredibly soft and, you know, because long-haired, fluffy. Soft and fluffy and so gentle in nature. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it was Bunty, I do believe. It was Bunty, who was the one who was trying to show all the others who was boss, I do believe. I could be mistaken. Well, because there was five boys. <laughs> I mean, that stopped fairly quickly, actually. It was only initially at about uh, five and a half weeks old. There was a little bit of the puppies trying to work out who the boss is going to be out of that lot. You know, so they were play fighting all the time. Um, but I say it didn't last very long. Stopped that fairly quickly. But yeah, there was a lot of bundles going on. Certainly at that time, I don't think it was Bunty doing that though. I can't remember who was doing it. But yeah, there's one of them doing it and doing it on a regular basis. But anyway, yeah, it's lovely when you find out how well they're doing and I mean even found out today that Elgie and Frankie are both doing fantastically well 
you know, the people that got them are absolutely overjoyed with them. You know, yeah. So, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. But the people that got Frankie, the woman said that, that was the best decision she's made in her life. Yeah. All right. Well, as I say, Frankie's a wonderful boy. Wonderful little bubba. Yeah. Incredibly friendly with people, because, of course, Elgin, Elgi, I call him Elgi, they call him Elgin. Elgi and Frankie were being taken out to this park here and meeting people from four weeks old. So from four weeks old to seven weeks old, of course, we had glorious weather at that time as well. Weather was really nice, hardly any rain at all. So... They went out pretty much every day. Came down to the park every day to meet with different people. So oh, they got to socialise and got to love meeting people. Didn't meet dogs because, of course, at that point in time they hadn't had their jabs, so it wouldn't be right for them to meet dogs. But people, they met people, lots of people. Oh, yeah. And people doing some of the weirdest things. There was... There was <laughs> There was one bloke who was testing out his uh, rock climbing equipment on a tree that we're going to come up to shortly. And his friend, possibly girlfriend, not too sure, um, was dressed in a, uh, I think, a squirrel outfit. Yeah, big fluffy thing. Um, might have been squirrel, might have been, um, I don't know what it was exactly, but some big fluffy thing. And of course, the pups couldn't make that out. Didn't know what to make of that at all. So that, <laughs> that was very funny. You right, Molly Connie? You right, Bubba? Girl? I got you. I got you, Bubba. Here you go. Here you go, Molly. Come on, Bubba. On you go. On you go, Molly. Don't worry. I got you. Come on, Bubba. Come on, Molly. All right, so what I was going to talk about tonight was ticket. I suppose the subject matter is ticket. And, yeah, basically a point of, yeah, the sins you commit all go down on a ticket sort of thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, it could be the case that your life is written in a book with your title, with your name as the title of the book and everything you get involved in is in that book, good and bad. Possibly. Let's say it's a book. Okay, it's a book. Okay. So your book. We'll call it your book, this subject. Okay. So in your book, everything you've done, good and bad. Now, all the bad you've done, the cost of anything bad you do, as in sin, there's one cost that covers all sin. All sin. And that cost is death. Now, not death as in you die. Death as in you die to God, basically. So therefore, you're dead to God. God's basically leaving you to the devil. That's the thing. If you don't repent, then you've decided you want to stay where you are. So God says, okay, you stay there. So when you die, you go and join the God of your life. And that's the point. Everyone joins the God of their life. Now, if you're, you're giving your life to the world, the God of the world is the devil. So that means you give your life to the devil because you're giving your life to the God of the, of the world. So, yeah. Right, come here, Riley. Riley here. You give your life to God and you make sure your life stays with God then you go to God at the end of your life. If you give your life to the world, then yes, you give your life to the devil. And you've not repented of your sins. If you don't repent of your sins, you cannot in any way, shape or form inherit heaven. You can't go there. Because if anyone with sin enters heaven, that base yeah, that's not good. Because then, yeah, where do you draw the line? Because the way that God points it out is sin is sin. All sin separates you from God. All sin. 
as I said the other day. Yeah, there's a way provided that the price is paid for all that you have. All that you have. Come here, Amber. Come here. I don't know what's going on there. I can hear people, but I can't see them. I can hear them. They're quite loud. Come here. Oi, here now. Amber, here. Get here, Amber. Here now. Come here. Oh, dozy dogs. Get in now. Here. The people are obviously over the bridge. The problem is, is that you sometimes get people here who want to steal dogs for dog fighting. And so, of course, when they start going over the bridge and I'm so far behind, I have to shout at them to come back. Amber, get your butt here now. You don't go so far ahead. Amber, get your butt here now. You do not go so far ahead. Riley, stay with Dad. Amber, stay with Dad. Good boy, Chewy. Well done, mate. Wait, get here, Riley. Riley, Amber here, now. Well, as I say, you just don't know what could be ahead, do you? Especially in areas where you can't see. You just don't know what could be there. Wait, come here now. We're not going that way, are we? Stop going that way. We don't go that way now, do we? So behave yourself. Riley, come here. I'll get back onto the subject in a second. Just get past this area. They can hear people talking, so they want to go and say hello to them, which is understandable. The problem is you just don't know who the people are. So, I mean, a lot of people just don't want to say hello to dogs anyway. They don't want dogs jumping up at them. Which is understandable. So, I can't see anyone there, but there's somebody there, obviously, clearly. Where they are, I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, back to the subject. Yeah, we make decisions in our life. We've gone over this one a number of times. The problem is a lot of people just don't seem to get it. And they don't. There is freedom to make your own decisions. You get to choose what sort of life you want to live. Where you want to be, what you want to do, etc. I said, you get to decide all these things. The reason why you get to decide these things is that in the end, when you're on your day of judgment, it's your life. God is judging you based on your decision making based on the decisions that you made. If it was a case where you could be easily led, that easily led, where you couldn't make your own decisions, well then, there could be no adjustment, could there? But that's it, folks. We all get to make our own decisions. We all do. That's the reality. That's why we can be judged. That's why it's fair. And of course, I mean, as I say, I would stand with people if they said, is it harsh that someone who's just lied once may end up spending eternity in hell because of that one lie? Yeah, to a certain degree, but also no. Yes, to a certain degree, but no to a certain degree. Well, how can it be yes and no? It can be yes and no because, yeah, without understanding, yeah, you would think so, yeah, definitely. With understanding, you realise it wouldn't be. Well, for example, if you understood how many chances had that person was given to give their life to God, how many times were they told that because of their sin, even that one sin, that that's enough to separate them from God? And they didn't bother to take notice of it. They didn't bother to decide that they wanted to be right with God. 
they thought they were already. Because they thought they were a decent person. And yeah, there's a lot of decent people who are going to be spending eternity in hell. A lot of decent people. I upset people in the past when Mother Teresa died. And people were saying, oh, she's definitely in heaven. Well, how do you know? I've said before, who was she serving? Was she serving God or was she serving the Catholic Church? Or was she serving herself? There's three possible things that she was serving. Who was she serving? Because that's really important. If she was serving God, if it was all about serving God and she's being led by the Holy Spirit to do what she was doing, then yeah, of course. She'd be in heaven telling magnificent stories to the people there. If it is serving the Catholic Church, then she'd be in hell telling stories, telling people how she belongs in heaven and how she thought she'd be there. Amba, come here. Now. Come, Babs. Molly. Here you go, Molly. You take that. Yeah, let's say, if she was serving herself, again, hell. For an eternity. Yeah. And we've got people coming, so I'll pause this for a sec. So anyway, but this is this is the point we don't know. You can look at someone like Mother Teresa, you can look at um, someone like Hitler. Now, even Hitler, could he have repented before he died? Possibly. Possibly. It all does depend. I mean, did he kill himself? That's the thing. We don't know. Stories say that maybe he did. And if he did, well, then he probably wouldn't have much of a chance to repent of that, would he? So, therefore, he'd probably be in hell because of that. But, again, we don't know. So, it's quite possible Hitler could be in heaven. Mother Teresa could be in hell. This is our incredibly, you know, it could be, because it's up to you. It's not according to the world system. According to the world system, the rich would be going to heaven, the poor would all be going to hell. That's the reality, because who would be making this, the, the decisions as to who goes? It'd be the rich. They have the power. So they'd be the ones making the, the decisions. I mean, yeah. Up until very, very recently, up until, what, about 20 years, I guess? Well, 20, I would say 30 years, up until about 30 years. If you were a Mason, you or your lawyer, probably be your lawyer, actually, because most lawyers are Masons, you or your lawyer could give the Masonic sign to the judge, and the judge would make sure, and the other side would make sure, that you got away. That you weren't found guilty. Okay? That's... Sounds ridiculous, it sounds crazy, but that was the case. It was reported that people were doing this. That they were going into courts and giving the fingers that sign. That you're a mason. And, yeah. They were having... Their case is thrown out. And the prosecution weren't arguing it at all. Wait. Get out of it, Nutter. What are you doing under my car? Does your dog. What are you doing? Pack it up, Nutter. Wait, come on. Come on, Luce. Riley. Riley, move. Lucy. Just told, move now. People keep dumping food around the area, I guess. That's why the dogs keep sniffing around the area. And don't particularly want to move from it. So, there you go. Here's what it is. Yeah. Anyhow, so, yeah. I mean, look. 
it's a weird thing, but this is why, you know, the church, as I've said before, the church should have been speaking about all this. And it was. You go pre-1960s, the church was speaking about this quite a lot. It was designed to scare people. You know, to live a life in the way they wanted people to live their lives. Um, but then when people realised, well, as I said, about the 1940s, really, you know, people decided that they didn't want to do that anymore. You know, the war had changed everything. Second World War. So, because it changed everything, you know, everything changed. And the church was just completely left behind. Didn't have a clue, because it wasn't being guided by God, it was being guided by man. Being guided by Bible college, really. <laughs> so there you go. There's a mighty collie. And she is. Where is you? Where is you? You've been a bit close. I'm trying to get you on video. Here you go. In and out, in and out. There she is. There she is. There's a mighty collie. Hey, with a waggy tail. There you go, Bob. There's Amber. Hey, Chewy. Hey, Chewy, Chewy. <laughs> There's Riley over there. Just about to see he's green. Lucy is in amongst the boxes of rubbish over there. Riley, get down from the bin. Not a... And look, in the end, we all have things against us in our book. We all have things against us. But when you repent, you have a little note next to that thing with the word paid. Huh? Oi! Leave it. Come on, idiot. You get food when you get home, don't you? Don't you? Right. Behave. Voice of the behave. That comes from the group, Voice of the Beehive. <laughs> Voice of the behave. Anyhow, yeah, you have that written by you in your book, the things you've done, the word paid. At the end of the book, paid in full. But that is very dependent upon you continuing to repent. Because this is the point, and this is why, yeah, those people in Scripture... Who said, Lord, Lord, haven't we, cast out, haven't we cast out demons in your name, healed the sick in your name? And the Lord says, away with you, I never knew you. Because at one point in their book, you have paid next to the things they've done wrong. But then most likely, they got a bit ego-ish, thinking about all the things they've done for the Lord. They stopped repenting, they stopped thinking that they needed to repent. They stopped realising that they were sinning, because... They saw themselves as, you know, the better people. You know, they were righteous. Yeah, so they didn't need to repent, did they? So they stopped repenting. Because they stopped repenting, they were now people of the world. Their God was now the devil. And because they weren't repenting, there wasn't any paid in full. Now, of course, one question that you always have to have with regard to that scripture. When the Lord says, I never knew you, that is a very difficult one to translate because I think the translation of that is wrong. The reason why I think the translation of that bit is wrong is because we are led to believe that God knew all of us before we were even born. So if God knew all of us before we were even born, and certainly if you cast out demons in his name, at the point in time when you were doing that, he would have known you. Because you can't cast out demons in the name of the Lord unless you're in a relationship with him because you don't have the authority to do so. And the demons will attack you. As I said, we see that in Acts. Look in Acts when the man says, I cast you out in the name of the God that Paul believes in. You know, 
demons kick the crap out of him. Basically. <laughs> it doesn't work. You've got to have the authority. I've done videos on that. I mean, you search through, you can find... I've done. I've covered most subjects. Now... I have indeed, but yeah, that's the reality is that people who, yeah, for example, as I've mentioned before, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland was someone who was doing very, very well. You know, he had a good message. He was getting out there. He was spreading the word. He was a teacher and an evangelist. He was doing a great job, but then he got into the prosperity ministry. That dark one. Yeah, the one that uh, is all about getting your money. Yeah, buying himself an aeroplane and all that sort of stuff. Yeah? Telling you that the more you give, the more you're going to get. But it's not biblical. But it's not. Yeah, the more you give as to how God wants you to give, the more you're going to get. Yes. But it's got to be God-led. If it's not God-led, then no, you're just giving. But God isn't telling you to give. You're not necessarily giving where God wants you to give it. So, you know, you're supposed to sow. But really, if you sow the seed in the right field, then it will grow. If you try sowing your seed in the wrong field, certainly in a field that you've not been given permission to sow in, it will probably be dug up, right? Because it's not your field to sow in. So, yeah. That's another point, another thing to discuss maybe at some point. That when you sow your seed, the reason why you need to be led and guided is because of the fact you want your seed to grow. Because Scripture says that you know, it will come back to you 10, 30 or, or 100 times. Now, of course, you want it to come back to you, don't you? It'll only do that if it's able to grow. It won't grow if you're sowing in the wrong field. You know, if it's not your field to sow in, it won't grow, will it? That's the reality. Hello, Muddy Cuddy. That Bubba girl? I got you. Come on, don't worry, I got you. I got you, Bubba. Don't worry. You're a little scary cat, ain't you? Even though you're a dog. Even though you're a dog, you're a little scared of cat, ain't you, Molly Connie, eh? Eh? You stand with Daddy for protection. You want Daddy to protect Molly? Oh, yeah, you want Daddy to protect Molly. I'll protect you, Bubba. I'll protect Molly Connie, don't you worry, eh? I'll protect you, Bubba. That's my job, isn't it, eh? Come on, girl. I got you. I got you. Don't worry. You do realise you've got teeth, though, don't you? Eh? you got teeth. you got a good-sized bite on you. Look at you, hey? Look at you. You are so beautiful, aren't you? Hey, you are. Let's smiley riley. Look at you, the baby. Oh, look at you, the baby. Look at you, the mighty Carly, eh? Oh, scared it. Oh, scared it, the mighty Carly, eh, bubs? He's all scared it. Oh, poor mighty Carly. Poor Molly Collie all scared it. Oh, poor baby. I've taken down the zoom a bit so we can get Molly actually in the picture. Because I was trying to get her in the picture, but the zoom was so big, I just couldn't get her in the picture. So she's a bit further away now. There you go. There you go. Here's Molly Collie. Is that better, Molly? You prefer the light, yeah? There you go, pup. You get that. There you go, pup. Oh, there you go, Molly. You're a happy girl now, are you? You got your bop-bop. There's a good girl. Oh, Molly got a bop-bop. So anyway, yes, um, okay, I was talking about seed, yes, right type of ground, yes, the ground that you're supposed to be sowing in, yes. So yeah, vitally important. And so that's why when you sow to these ministries like Kenneth Copeland, yeah, the reason why you don't see the return is because of the fact that you're sowing into something that God isn't telling you to sow into. And so it's not going to work. If God's telling you to sow into that ministry, it'll work. But you often see these people doing this. Um, 
The other chap, the chap with the dreadlocks. I've mentioned him before, but I forgot what his name is now. Um, but he's done the same there. He's been asking for money to build this special church. Um, oh God. Yeah, I mean, look. The whole point of asking for money is you put it out there, fine. Put it out there, say, okay, we need to raise this amount of money. We're trusting in God to raise it. If, if God is telling you to give some money towards it, great. Give the money. Give give what God wants you to give. But if God isn't telling you to give, don't give. You've got to put that on the end of it. If God isn't telling you to give, don't give to it because you're just throwing your money away, right? You know, you should be teaching. He and Copeland and the rest should be teaching people how to obey God. Because that's far more important, really. You know, that God leads. God says, you know, give money to them over there. So you give money to them over there, don't you? That's the whole point, isn't it, really? I was saying earlier about the person who was um, doing the tree stuff. I think it was... Yeah, good question. I think it was a tree over here. Um, it may have been that one there. That tree there that the person was using. Yeah, I think it was. Because it's they've got some good, strong, low branches to that one. So, yeah, I think it was that one that he was using. That's cool, watching him with all his tack gear and all stuff like that, yeah. Why? He was testing out his new stuff. Like I said, the pups were down there, I was sort of watching him, watching the the lady with the um, school outfit or whatever it was. Why? <laughs> That's why I like with them, you know, Frankie and Elgie, incredibly friendly pups. Yeah, because they got out. And, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if Molly has a similar, similar number again, then they will grow nice and big, so therefore they'll be going out. Again, the weather is different now. So will they be going out as often? Probably not. No. Yeah, in the summer it's a different matter. Hi. So, yeah. Look, folks, in the end... I mean, I, I try and give whatever God gives me to give. Simple as that. That's all I can do. I can't do more than that. I'm not going to try and talk on issues that I don't understand because then that, that's pointless. Yeah. As I get understanding, I share that understanding. I mean, even tonight, I was talking about the... Um, these people that are saying, Lord, Lord, and talking about the fact that they come away from then talking about Copeland, then talking about people giving the Copeland it shouldn't be. Um, and then, of course, the understanding came, something I've never thought of before. That, yeah, you're supposed to sow your seed into the field that God tells you to sow your seed into. Because if you sow your seed into the wrong field, it won't grow. Because it will be dug up, because it's not your field. And that's very, very true indeed. You know? I mean, anyone who knows about the issue of fields and sowing, is that you sow into a field, if you've been told that you can use that plot to sow into, you can do that because that's designated as your plot, right? To sow into. If you go and sow into someone else's plot, that will be re-sown. With their stuff. So the stuff you've sown won't grow. That's the facts of the situation. That's the universal truth about sowing, basically. Um, so, I didn't understand that beforehand. I wasn't even thinking that. I don't think I've ever thought about it in that way. So that understanding came tonight as I was walking around. Now, that's how it should be. Because then, you know, it's God who's speaking through you. So that's good. And look, I mean, you know, I've not been perfect tonight, not in any way, shape or form. You know? 
I've given in to sin tonight. And yet God will still give me your understanding. Will still speak through me when I go out and try and give this walk and talk. You know, he's still honouring me in doing that. So that's good. You know? That's cool. Aye. It is indeed. That's that's a good thing. So, yeah. Brilliant. I mean, the weather-wise, I thought it was going to be quite cold. It's actually spot on. I really think it is. I, I did put on a warmer jacket because when I w- walked outside, it was cold. Um, puppies tonight are... There's two left. There's Flopsy and Pinto. They should both be going tomorrow. So for tonight, I've got them both in the shower. Now, early on, they were in there and they were moaning a lot, crying a lot to get attention because as soon as they hear noise, they wake up and they start moaning for attention. So I've got this old bit of... Um, shoe well a bit of trainer it's just the um, uh, basically the sole of it the rubber of it the sole and so that's in the bathroom I just got that tapped them both on the head went right shush now tapping them both on the head saying nah no and then when I put them back in there later because they were outside and moaning a lot didn't have to say a word to them. They just laid down and were quiet. So that's good. That's good. With previous pups, I've had to use that um, that little rubber bit of shoe a number of times for them. You know, you know, after about three or four times, then yeah, they get the message. You know, a little tap on the bum or a little tap on the head. Yeah, you know, they're going. They notice that and they go, oh, okay, I don't want that, I don't like that at all. So it works. Riley, come. Lucy. Lucy. You're missing Lucy, here she comes. Come on, Lucy, what have you been doing? Will you stop looking for food, Janata? You get food when we get home now. After walking, you get fed, don't you, you dozy dog? Go on, you get it. Okay. As soon as you've got something in your mouth, you can't be vomiting, can you? Oh, dear. <laughs> in the house. So, yeah. So, they're in there. I say they're doing well. The reason why they're in there tonight is so that maybe, hopefully, their first night alone, you know, in their new homes will be easier for them because they will hopefully learn tonight that when they go in, for sleep time, they're supposed to sleep. That's the idea. So, yeah. There's only two left. You know, I mean, I could have had Flopsy go earlier today. No. Let's, um, let's have them both go tomorrow. Now, this video will probably be, be uploaded after they've both gone, actually. Yeah. Well, I've been doing something recently. You might notice the quality of the uh, videos is improving. And that's because on the software I use to edit, you can choose 1080p or you can choose... I don't know what the biggest one is. I think 14, 1480, and then something really higher. So, you know, on the last video I did, I chose that. And it made a video that was about 3 gig into 21 gig. And so (laughs) that took a good sort of four hours to upload onto YouTube. Whereas normally a video would take, you know, okay, maybe about, uh, yeah, a 3 gig one would take probably about half an hour. So, um... Hi. Well, I'm just experimenting with that just to see if it is noticeable difference in quality. And I, I think you, yeah, you can tell. I think to a certain degree you can tell. If you look at a video done last week, 
the video I've done over the last couple of days, you'll notice the difference. Yeah, so... Well, I'm not saying I'm going to keep doing it, because, <laughs> obviously, uh, it takes a lot longer to upload the videos. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I will do it certainly on, on occasion. On occasion. So, anyway, I think... It was a good walk and talk tonight. And I say, I, I, I understood something in a different way than I had before, so that's good. Um, I mean, that's important. Cause if I have, then certainly anyone listening would certainly have understood that in a different way, most likely. Well, not certainly, but most likely. Um, and even if that's the only thing you've understood in a different way, that's good. Money come, come here, babes. Let's do your collar, bubs. Okay. Good guy. Come at you. Let's do your collars, mate. Head up, Chewy. Head up. Thank you, boy. That's a good boy. As soon as I turn him head up, he lifted his head, so that's good. There's a good baby boy. Ninja.